my dear brothers and sisters, with the Sam, we have repeated, blessed, the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. My friends, we are that people. We are the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. And the readings of today tell us how to be the people of God. Or we can say it in a different way. These readings are telling us how to spend our lives. It is that serious. The message liturgy brings to us this Sunday. Let's go to the gospel. We have read the longer form. This text is taken from chapter 12 of the gospel according to Luke. We can distinguish two or three sections in this long passage from chapter 12. The first part is about generosity. Generosity. Sell your belongings and give alms. That's the invitation the Lord is presenting before us. It is a kind of a challenge. Sell your belongings. Give alms. We can remember the story of that young man. You surely remember it. That story. That young man that wanted to obtain eternal life and went to Jesus and asked him, what should they do to get, to have, to obtain eternal life? And the Lord replied to him, okay, you have to obey the commandments. And this young man said, I have, I have obeyed the commandments, which in itself is very notorious. It is outstanding to think of a young person that can say truly, I have obeyed God's commandments. Wow, that's outstanding. But the Lord goes even farther. And the Lord says, okay, that's, that's good. Next step for you, go sell your belongings and give alms. That's the next step. And it's so interesting because when we connect that text with this passage, we understand that this was a constant invitation from the Lord. In fact, the Lord is inviting everyone to be so generous. <coughs> well, that seems almost impossible. Especially when we really understand that this is an invitation for everyone. But there is a foundation. There is a basis so that we can fulfill this command from the Lord. And that foundation is what we find in the very first verse of this text. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father is placed to give you the kingdom. Please remember that the kingdom of God is the greatest message that the Lord proclaims in the gospel. And he is saying that the Father in heaven gives his kingdom to this little flock 
this little flock that we are. The Lord is giving us the kingdom. What I mean is that the Father is the first generous one. He is the generous. And from God's generosity, we learn to be generous. From God's abundance, we learn to share. From God's streaming love, we learn and we become able to love. Everything has its source in God's generosity, in God's abundance. When we take this verse, sell your belongings and give alms, when we take that text, isolate it from the rest of the message, it looks kind of impossible. We are not able to do that. Because it is part of the self-preservation instinct to keep, to keep, to gather, to keep for ourselves. But when we experience God's generosity, when we experience ourselves overflowing in God's abundance, then that, so to speak, natural egotism vanishes, disappears, and we learn to be generous. And this is the first part of the answer, how to spend our lives. The Lord is telling us, spend your life in generosity, in generosity. Sell your belongings, give alms. And what about myself? If I gave to others, what about me? Do not be afraid, little flock. The Father in heaven is giving to you the kingdom. Do not be afraid because you are receiving from God and God is inexhaustible, which is the word that we find exactly in the next verse. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out. Don't be afraid to be generous. Don't be afraid of spending yourself in service to others. Do not be afraid. Because if you do so, the same measure you're giving to others, you will receive from Father in heaven and even more. In giving to others, you are securing for yourself an inexhaustible treasure in heaven. So first part of the response, first part is be generous. Spend your life, spend your life in generosity. The second part begins when the Lord warns us about the work we are called to do. Gird your loins and light your lamps. Be like servants who await the master's return from a wedding. This is the second part. Gird your loins. Loins. This refers to this part of the human body, like the hip. We should remember that it was the custom of people of that time to use uh, as a means of clothing a tunic, like the one I have, a tunic. And when they were at home, they would use their tunic without anything else. 
But when going to work, for example, at the field, when going to travel, it was necessary to gird your loins, like putting on a belt. Gird your loins. So that expression is a way of telling us, be ready for work. Be ready for work. That's one possibility. The other possibility is, be ready for traveling. And in either sense, it makes complete sense to us. Be ready to work. And also, be ready for moving. And I think we consecrated people, we religious people, we can apply very aptly this message. Why? Because that's exactly what the religious person does. Exactly that. We are ready for work and we are ready for moving from a place to a place. Father Luis, for example, well, he was born in El Salvador. He is here. He has gone to different places and most probably his community will ask him in the future, okay, Father Luis, thank you for your work here. Now we need you there. And then there, gird your loins. Be ready for work. Be ready for traveling, for going from point A to point B to point C, and all the rest. But there is a catch here. The Lord is inviting us to wait for the Master's return. And at the same time, He is telling us to be vigilant. Not only that, if that servant says to himself, this is Christ teaching us, If that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk. Why, why is the Lord telling us this story? Because You remember what we said in the psalm. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The owner is the Lord. We are not owners. We are not. The owner is the Lord. He is the owner. So, who are we? Servants. And the Lord says, who is the faithful and prudent steward? Steward. That's what we are. Stewards. We are not owners. We are stewards. But what do you think? What do you think will happen to that steward that thinks to himself, my master is delayed in coming? When that servant, when that steward thinks to himself, my master is delayed in coming? He begins to feel owner. So we truly, in all truth, we are servants. We are stewards. But when we forget 
that the master is coming. When we forget that, we begin to think of ourselves as owners. And the one who thinks he or she is the owner is the one that only takes care of himself, of herself. You remember that parable oh, that was, I think, the last Sunday? That rich man that had a wonderful harvest? And that man thought to himself, Okay, I have had a bountiful harvest. What will I do? And he only thought of gathering all his grain, all his goods, everything, just for himself. He was thinking only of himself. Because he was the owner. And this is what happens when we regard ourselves as the owners. That we begin to gather just for ourselves. Only for ourselves. I'm the owner. I have the right to. I'm entitled to. I'm the owner. And this is the behavior of that person that sees himself as the owner, he begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants. So the others, now the others become my servants. Look at that. When we forget that we ourselves are servants and we begin to think of ourselves as owners, then our neighbors become our servants. Now I am the owner. I am the one in charge of everything. It's only my desire. It's only my pleasure what matters. So that you are my servant and you are my servant and you are my servant. And if you are not ready to be my servant, I beat you. I strike you. Because you have to be my servant. This is the reason for that beating. So that man, or woman for the same case, will begin to eat and drink and get drunk. And get drunk. If you don't find your happiness, your plenitude, your everything in God, you need to get drunk. You need something to experience a sort of infinite or endless happiness. So what the Lord is presenting to us in this text is how, how, we become when we regard ourselves as owners, when we forget that we are just stewards. When we forget that, we begin to regard ourselves as owners and then mistreat other people, be self-centered, eat, and drink and get drunk and get drunk that's important so trying to find some endless endless happiness some kind of bliss so what's the message here the message is do not forget that you are a servant and you are the steward. And it's not bad to be servant of God. Actually, it's the best trade you can make. 
It's the best trait to be God's servant. Why? Because when the Lord comes back, what will happen? Well, when the Lord comes back, he says, they, uh, he will have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them when he comes back. So do not be afraid of being a servant. Do not deceive yourself thinking of yourself as an owner. You are not. You are not that. You are a servant. You are a steward. And if you remember that, you will experience not only God's generosity, as we said at the beginning, but, we, and, but you also will experience that God himself is the first servant. The first servant. So he is the first generous one, and he is the first servant. Now we have a sort of complete answer to the question at the beginning of this homily. How should we spend our lives? Number one, being generous because our generosity just flows from God's generosity. And second, do not forget that you are a servant, you are a steward, do not fool yourself thinking of yourself as an owner. If you keep your own place and if you remember who you are, you are ready not only to be fruitful and to be useful, but you will find true happiness and will come to know God as the one who takes care of you and bless you in every circumstance.